2023 at our city council meeting. And our invocation will be provided by uh, Pastor Bob Spradling. So if you can stand for the invocation and please remain standing for the Pledge of Allegiance. And Reverend Spradling, start whenever you like. Madam City Clerk, can you please call the roll? Beers. Here. Perkins. Here. Stewart. Here. McCandless. Here. Hobart. Here. Mayor Rowland. Here. And if I could request the council's indulgence to move the I-Star Award uh, right up on the agenda to do it now, I would indulge that. If we could have a motion and a second, please. So moved. We've got a motion and second. a second. Okay, thank you very much. Um, and then, Madam City Clerk, can you please call the roll? Beers? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. So we will do that right now, and we have a proclamation, but I have some good words for Roxanne, excuse me, Roxanne Stivers, uh, and she has a warrant she works in warrant services, and uh, she was selected for this month's I-Star Award winner, which is basically like the Employee of the Month, and just for her outstanding service. And here are some of the things that her supervisor said about her. Recently, I witnessed her going above and beyond when a victim was brought to headquarters uh, unclothed in handcuffs. Roxanne made phone calls, went and received clothing for the woman, and stayed with her to ensure that she was taken care of and provide support and she did this without hesitation. That is just one example of her outstanding work. There have been many times, myself and others, have seen her when she's given encouragement to me and to my fellow colleagues, when it was needed and when it was appropriate. She, aw she is aware of everything that's going on around her. She was recently, excuse me, she was recently promoted to warrant services, and while tackling her new position, uh, she does the watch guard fingerprinting and ride along packets. Beginning to work in a police department can be a little intimidating, sometimes not aware that the atmosphere can be intimidating to other people. She single-handedly makes sure that everyone doesn't feel intimidated, that they feel comfortable and welcome. I love this. This is a great line. She is unapologetically authentic. What a great way to be described. She is unapologetically authentic and welcomes everyone with open arms. And so with that, I am delighted to offer Roxanne Stivers the uh, I-Star Award for November. So Roxanne. I have a motion and a second for the presentation of the I-Star Award. So moved. Got a motion? Second. We've got a second. We've got a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, uh, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Beers? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. May Rowland? Yes. 
All right, and that brings us to citizens' request. Uh, we have Thomas Collins, and he uh, and we've got. Let me double check here. I think we've got everybody that's Independence residents. Good. We've got everybody from Independence, so we don't need a motion. Uh, Thomas Collins, come on up, and you're our first speaker this evening. Is Thomas here? Thomas Collins. I'll hold it back. Uh, Tim Cantor. Can Canton? And Tim? I'm sorry. Caton, okay. And Tim, please state your name and address, please. Uh, Tim Caton, 4225 South White Sands Court, Blue Springs, Missouri, Independence. Sure. I'm quite aware of that section of Independence that has Blue Springs yes. addresses, so uh, very, very well. Thank you, Tim, and you'll have five minutes, and please okay. proceed. Uh, I just came tonight to speak uh, in opposition for the North Point project that they're going to be discussing tonight. Um, I just wanted to share my extreme disappointment in city politics. Um, I've witnessed not only through the planning commission process how uh, I took 30 minutes to actually present specific points that were rooted in fact, that actually had documentation showing specific concerns with the, uh, the project. The vote was made without any consideration to those, uh, those concerns. I've had uh, conversations with uh, several of you, actually Jared Spear, Jared Fear has actually just called me on the phone 10 minutes before he was walking into a meeting an hour ago. He, he, Based off of an email that I sent two months ago, he calls me 10 minutes before he's walking into a meeting to basically tell me that he's going to vote in support of this project. So didn't listen to any of the concerns, didn't take the time to, do, to call out the due diligence that was behind that. So if we can, let's stay on the policy of the issue in opposition or sure. Uh, sure. against the policy and, and not addressing anyone personally, if you could please. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's, I mean... The, the entire process for this has been just a complete joke. There's been, we have gone through, we have explained our position on this, we've given documentation for this. Nobody has taken the time to do the due diligence behind this. I would just ask that you guys take a moment to take a step back, vote in support of, of uh, postponing this meeting so that you can look at this information, so that you can talk to the homeowners in Stone Canyon, so that you can talk to your constituents about this issue and actually be informed about this besides what you're just being told from the North Point development people. They're, they're telling you what you want to hear because they want to sell their project, but you're not taking the time to talk to the school district. You're not taking, taking the time to, to actually do a traffic study that goes past the intersection where they're building this uh, property. You're not taking the time to talk to the homeowners that this is gonna affect. You're not talking to the city of Blue Springs. They actually control the road that this is gonna be building on. So all these things haven't been done, to my knowledge. I mean, you, you can certainly take the time to explain that in this meeting, how you have done those kind of things, but none of this has been done. And you're, you're calling me, you know, again, calling me 10 minutes before the meeting is just not, that's just not appropriate. That that's not representation for the constituents in, in in independence, and I think we all deserve better. So, I yield my Thank time. you, Tim. Uh, Laura Dominic is next. Laura, and you know the drill, so. I do know the drill. Nurse. Try not to interrupt someone's presentation. Uh, good evening, Laura Dominic, 3525 Blue Ridge Boulevard in Independence. For years, I've watched every council meeting and every study session that was convened. And over the last about two years, I've heard more discussion about ethics than I've heard about virtually any other topic or issue here in the city of Independence. So you can imagine my surprise when I received this in the mail. This side of this mailing has two lies on it about the use tax. This side has two of my elected officials on it. Now, the proposed ethics code I read on the website does not specifically state that elected officials cannot lie to their constituents, though maybe it should. However, it does state this under Division 8, Administrative Provision Section 1.16.044, Other Obligations. 
The second paragraph states, even if a city official or employee is not prohibited from taking official action by this code of ethics, action may be prohibited by duly promulgated personnel rules, which may be more stringent. And in fact, the city's personnel policies and procedures, Article 6, Section H, Subsection 2, causes for disciplinary action state. Any action which reflects discredit upon the municipal service may be considered good cause for disciplinary action against any employee of the city. As a reminder, you are an employee of the city. You are covered by the personnel policies and procedures, whether you try to carve out a portion or not, as you have done, as to what applies to you. They actually all apply to you unless you're not defined in a particular category. Major causes for disciplinary action under the same section are listed below in subsection W any other act of dishonesty. Regardless of any laws, policies, procedures, the action of one member of the city council reflects on each and every one of you and the entire city. I remember a two plus hour study session in August of which I watched the entirety, which was mostly about the ethics policy, that just uh, as a side note, only there's three of you here who did not even attend that meeting, um, which makes me concerned as to whether you believe in the ethics policies you've been discussing and ensuring things are handled properly or not. So I am hoping that this same situation is handled properly in accordance with the relevant sections of the personnel policies and procedures and whatever ethics policies you finally settle on. This was a very public violation. Therefore, I hope the results of what your investigation finds are made just as public. In conclusion, please don't preach honesty, integrity, transparency, unless you are willing to, as a body, hold yourselves accountable to the ethics policies you aspire to. Now, if you'll excuse me, I have work to do tonight for the personnel policies, excuse me, the personnel board meeting tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. conference room D if you'd like to be there. We welcome you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Brian, I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce your name correctly, Draveling, thank you. Thank you, Brian. I'm Brian Draveling, 4125 South Eagle Point Court, Blue Springs, Missouri, also in Stone Canyon. <coughs> Good evening, I'm Brian Draveling. I'm 48 years old. For the last 43 years, I've lived in the city of Independence, Missouri. Graduated from Truman High School, went to the Western Missouri Police Academy here in Independence. I was a police officer for the city for over 22 years before having to medically retire in 2021. In my adult life, I've owned three houses, all within the city of Independence. This was a purposeful decision because I had faith in the city, which I worked for. I also wanted to be able to vote for the mayor and council persons that made decisions about my job, benefits, and pay. I'm speaking in opposition to the rezoning of the land located at the intersection of Artie Mize Road Duncan Road and Woods Chapel Road. The proposed rezoning would be for the era apartments that North Point Development wants to build. <clears throat> the era apartments, if approved, would share a boundary with the Stone Canyon neighborhood in which I live. My family built our house in 2009. I even convinced my widowed mom to build a house across the street from me so I can care for her as she progresses through life. When we built our house, the land in question was zoned for commercial use. It always had been and still is. North Point now wants the land rezoned for high density multifamily housing. That is not what any of the residents of the neighborhood signed up for when we built our or bought our homes. High density multifamily apartments will reduce the value of our homes. Our neighborhood is the second highest average tax base per home in the city only, stone, or only Saddle Ridge is higher. I would bet the land adjoining Saddle Ridge would never be rezoned as high density multifamily housing, if for no other reason than the ties that the developer has to highly influential people in the city. I'm certain our neighborhood and the Stone Canyon Golf Course would not have been developed if the air apartments were there before our neighborhood and golf course. No developer would have made that kind of investment with apartments bordering the property. The Stone Canyon HOA president has been the point of contact for the neighborhood. He has reached out to Mayor Rowland and the city council about rezoning and building of area apartments. He received 
in my opinion, very minimal response. In the meantime, the same people have taken field trips with North Point development to their properties in Lee Summit, Missouri. This looks really bad and I hope it's not another example of the long tradition of backdoor deals and promises made by the City of Independence and elected officials. I've never held office in Independence, but I would think the priority and respect would be given to the existing citizens, not the development company that is trying to build apartments to make a profit. North Point has no interest in Independence besides making money for themselves. <clears throat> a petition was signed in our neighborhood prior to planning commission meeting. The petition stated, we as a neighborhood did not want any of the three borders that have the potential to be to be developed to ever be high density multifamily housing. None of the areas are zoned for that now. We had 75% of the entire neighborhood sign the position, petition in opposition. I believe the final number would have been higher than 75%, but we did, did this in a very short time and could not get to everyone in the neighborhood. Of the 20 homeowners I personally went to and spoke to, 19 of them signed in favor of the petition. That's 95%. North Point representatives stated to me that they are trying to be good neighbors. If I was looking to move in, at, if I was looking at moving and knew at least 75% of my potential neighbors didn't want me there, I would look elsewhere. North Point has done the bare minimum to have interaction with the neighborhood. They requested only a very few houses were invited to the, were required to the send, they requested only the very few houses they were required when they sent the mailings about the development attend the meeting. Our HOA president respected their request. The second meeting was not a presentation, rather North Point representatives standing around with some pictures and proposals. North Point's traffic study did not even include the dismissal time of the middle school three blocks away, which is the, one of the worst traffic times of the day. If North Point is dead set on developing the land, then maybe they should build office buildings or a strip mall or medical plaza, which it is zoned for now. This is what the City of Independence 2040 planning, You've 2040 seconds, sir. plan has stated. In the 2040 plan, you're going to exceed the apartments that the plan calls for by 2040, or by the end of this year with everything being built. I have more, but I wish I had more than five minutes. But I understand. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Joe Burke, and please state your name and your address, please, Mr. Burke. I'm Joe Burke, 18209 East 25th Terrace Court South. Uh, I taught at Christman High School for 30 years in industrial technology. I want to thank Bridget for contacting me today and to go out and see the site by Southview, uh, which I consider to be very uh, unsafe for the residents there, which of my daughter who is handicapped with brain surgery and my son-in-law who is also blind uh, have to deal with from day to day. Uh, about three or four weeks ago, um, I bought her a three-wheel scooter. She tr attempted to go across uh, Hub Drive uh, to get down to Denny's, uh, which is a, like a landmine in that area uh, with potholes that are not being taken care of because supposedly the, the road is taken care of by Denny's or owned by Denny's or whatever. Um, we also uh, have seen that you have a parking lot there that apparently is attached to Hub Drive uh, to the apartments there uh, at Southview. Uh, that is on the other side of the street. Uh, there is a sidewalk there that goes to the entry exit of that parking lot and stops there. Does not proceed down toward Wendy's or Denny's. Uh, the grassy knoll that's there or the whatever you want to call it that's there could be a sidewalk, could have two ramps. Somebody needs to take the responsibility to uh, safely protect people that can't protect themselves. I am here speaking for them because there are many of them in those apartments over the years that I've known 
that have become victims of different situations, including ones that were going across 291 and getting killed on their way through there. Hence, we have all kinds of walkways and a uh, much better situation there that apparently the state provided. Uh, that same kind of uh, care for those residents should be done now so that these people don't have to fall as my daughter did off her three-wheeler, which I then got rid of. I just bought it a week before and finally got her something that she's stable in, which would be a jazzy chair. So spending more money to make it safe for my daughter to go across those streets. I can't be with them all the time. My son-in-law, who's with her all the time, he is blind now, totally blind. He used to be 5%. And they deal with it themselves. We've had to call, they have had to call your city fire department many times, including the time that she fell out of the chair and broke her foot, where she actually had the firemen lift her up and put her back into that chair so that she could get back to her apartment. I do want to say that I appreciate what the city has done as far as caring for these people and providing for them a safe place to be. The apartments themselves have been renewed, re renovated, and if you haven't seen what they've done there, you need to look at it because it is a model for all other cities. I'm from New Jersey. I wish one of the things that they did there was to care for their people just as you guys have done here. So that's what I have to tell you, as well as I've made a statement here, a printed statement. Uh, I talked to uh, Ms. McCandless about this previous to our meeting, and we have come up with some kinds of uh, plans to move forward on this, including a ramp on the other side of the street, including the extension of the sidewalk, which I think would be one solution to get them past those potholes that are in that street and by the way, you have cars that go through there constantly that are constantly being battered by the, all those potholes. So the situation is such that something needs to be done. And the City of Independence has done a great job with most of their streets here just recently in the last few weeks. My hat's off to you for what you've been doing for the community and that I hope that you'll continue to do. Thank you for your attention. Thank you, Mr. Burke. Uh, next is Jane Evans. And Jane? Mr. Mayor. Yes, please. Well, uh, she's coming up. Mr. City Manager, can you, uh, I don't know, Councilmember McCann's talked to you about that. Could you just make a note of this area? I did, and yep, I will make sure we get after this starting tomorrow. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much. And is it Mr. Evers or Evans? Evans, Jana Evans. Okay. Jana, and I had uh, pl uh, please pronounce your name and your address, please, and then you have five minutes. Jana Evans, 3403 North Delaware, Independence, Missouri, 64050, Kentucky Hill Subdivision. <coughs> Mayor Rollins and council members, thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. I am the president of Kentucky Hills HOA. We are here to represent Kentucky Hills homeowners. There are several of us here this evening in opposition to the rezoning of 2500 North Liberty. Comprehensive Plan 2040 works to preserve the integrity of existing neighborhoods. City staff has given their disapproval for this rezoning. The city has an obligation to homeowners to leave the current zoning in place as it was when they made their investment to buy their homes in keeping with the original planned use of the lot dating to 1957. In early summer, Mr. Hakes, the realtor, reached out to the HOA regarding the use of this space as offices for Bulwark Exterminator. This sounded innocuous. Weeks later, Hakes phoned me personally and mentioned there would be a small number of smaller pickup trucks in and out during the day restocking. I was told that most employees take their trucks home, so few would be left overnight in the parking lot. Later, we were made aware that rezoning was going to be required because of the nature of the business being prohibited in C1 zoning. Now we hear that it will be used as storage only. We have significant safety concerns due to congestion of cars from regular work traffic, 
school-related both foot and car traffic twice daily and daily neighborhood foot and car traffic. This issue was a major player in the denial of recent proposal to develop our neighborhood green space, which was denied by both City Planning Commission and City Council. To bring a fleet of trucks of unknown number, size, and frequency into the existing congestion is a recipe for disaster. We feel the motivation for zoning change comes from the realtor purely to market to either a known client or have the opportunity to upsell due to higher commercial designation. This motivation is not with consideration for nor in the best interest of Kentucky Hills homeowners. It purely benefits the realtor, seller, and buyer. What is actually going in here and what will this open us up to in the future? The C2 designation of the adjacent property was a shock to us in Kentucky Hills and apparently your city staff. The C2 designation of that property is an absolute enigma. I was told by city staff that particular C2 designation should have never been granted. Kentucky Hills has been victim in the recent past to a zoning nightmare courtesy of the city that nearly devastated our home values and our right to quiet enjoyment of our homes. We formed an HOA, came together as a community, opposed that proposal and won. We are here again united, standing firmly against this proposal. Kentucky Hills does not like being treated as an afterthought. We live here, pay taxes here, and vote here. We demand to be considered and put first. If this company cannot utilize the property as C1, they need to find an appropriate property. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much. <laughs> Next is uh, Keith, and help me with the uh, last name, Keith. Fuliani. Fuliani. Thank you, Keith. So I was here about a year ago. Yes, I'm with Keith Foyani at 3312 South Cochise, Independence, Missouri, 64057. Uh, we're with Pop Warner Football. We're at 2801 South Necessary Road. So uh, last time we spoke, uh, North Point was coming in next to us. Uh, we're the only active property down there being utilized of not raising corn or wheat or anything like that. So we have about 700 families down there. Artie Mice Road was horrible. And I expressed my concerns about that over a year ago. And Saturday morning, I drove down a nice new pavement uh, that North Point said that that was part of the deal was milling that. We got millings. We got the millings from that so we can put in our parking lot. Um, we've got water. So it's been 30, 39 years, I think, we've been down there not having running water. Uh, bathrooms is a big thing now that they're that uh, they're wanting to push for. We have about seven to eight hundred families. We that we, you know, it's a youth. It's a youth sport. So we're not, we're not with the city, you know. But everything we get is either from the the participants, and that that's pretty much it. North Point has done a lot for us. Uh, we're very appreciative of it. Uh, I'm old school. I believe in just word of mouth and your handshake is a is a deal and they have since day one that's kind of the way it's been done uh, they have I have no no issues we have no issues with them they've been great great uh, neighbors and they've done everything they possibly can we when I call them they answer they reply back they tell us they help us out if we need it so to us it's a great partnership and appreciate it and thank the city for helping us and and getting this done, and really that's about it. So our season's over now, so they can do whatever they want. It's it's kind of it's kind of exciting watching those buildings be built. Didn't realize it was 80 concrete trucks having to drive down there, and they build the walls. And the, I, I've never seen it done before in my life. But I mow down there. It's 50 acres, and it's just kind of neat just to see activity. So other than that, it's Monday night football. I know you all are busy, but I am leaving. So. Thank you very much, and I'll see you in another month. Thank you, Mr. Filiani. Mr. Jerry Winship. Jerry Winship, 
4527 Waters Edge, 4315 Nolan Road, Executive Director of the Nolan Road Community Improvement District. <coughs> Mr. Mayor and members of the council and all the department heads, I wish to compliment you and appreciation for the work that has been done to bring forth Cargo Largo. Uh, this has been a project for, well, 20 years, but two years really, and getting things done. And we had a lot of last minute things. Uh, the CID, we have 180 businesses up and down Northern Road, try to improve each one of those. And we worked this last week with the Union Pacific Railroad, Zach, Adam, department heads, Morris Heidi. Morris Heidi has been most helpful to us and his department. What they did in one week to open up that building and get rid of all that brush and everything really has been great for the city of Independence along the Union Pacific Railroad. Uh, but I just wanted to say thanks to you for everything. Uh, it's uh, 600,000 square feet five miles of conveyor belts, and it'll employ up to 500 people. And other than the school district of the city, it's probably one of the top private businesses in Independence now. And it's because of the city council working, the city manager, and all the department heads. Just want to say thank you very much. Thank you, Jerry. Evelyn Bray. Evelyn, if you can please state your name and address, and you'll have five minutes, please. Evelyn Bray, 500 Colonel Drive, Independence, Missouri, Kentucky Hills neighborhood. Um, I want to talk to you. Uh, opposition to rezoning of 2500 North Liberty from C1 to C2. Um, the size of the building seems way too small for a business of this nature. It raises the possibility of the building being demolished, a bigger building being built. We have no control over anything future may come in. Um, we're not uh, welcoming hazardous chemicals to be stored adjacent to residents' backyards. Several of our houses abut the, the property. There are no large fences. There's just chain link fences. Um, there, if there's a chemical spill, it would run directly into the water drains on the property. There's no grass to soak it up. It's all asphalt. It would empty into Mill Creek. Um, would you want hazardous chemicals in your backyard? It certainly would affect the homeowner's value of their houses uh, to have a pesticide company uh, coming and going. Uh, needless to say, um, the proprietor that was in there was a single proprietor. He only used it for storage, and uh, we wouldn't have the truck traffic and so forth. Um, very high traffic area. It's uh, one of our main entrances to the neighborhood. Um, it's also right adjacent to a school across the street, diagonally, not, not a good place for it. There's plenty of empty businesses for sale, for lease, up on 24 Highway, which is a mile and a half away. So um, the, this would be more of a commercial area that they should be looking into versus a suburban neighborhood that's been there since 1957. So... I just uh, would thank you for voting against this, and thank you. Thank you very much.
Next is Mr. L Kenneth Love. And Mr. Love, come forward and state your name and your address, please. And you have uh, five minutes. Kenneth Love, 16808 East George Franklin Drive, Independence, Missouri. What I was going to talk about, I can't talk about. Two weeks ago, I was here. I never seen any of these papers hanging up. All of a sudden, it's a policy change. These seats are for the residents of Independence to come here, to sit wherever they want. Not for this council to all of a sudden snap a finger tonight and make a decision and state that these are reserved, reserved seatings. That's why I took this one. Somebody set up or set there that shouldn't have been sitting there, knocked it down because it's taped up. This process did not go properly. It has not been in front of a study session. Y'all just make changes. You add nothing to an agenda. We the people don't know what's going on in City Hall because y'all made a change. Why? Is it because it's an election, upcoming election, and you don't want somebody sitting here, here, or here, or on this side that could be on TV, on Scenic News 7? But they can sure hear me speaking, and they can hear the other people speaking. That's why I'm speaking very loud, because I want the council to understand. We have rules. Y'all have rules. Y'all have procedures. Let's follow them, and let's get straight. Only places that are reserved in this room is where y'all sit, the city manager, the attorney, and these desks over here. These are for residents. Just like somebody said earlier, protocol, things that should be done, ethical. Well, let's get it right. Let's put it in front of a study session. Then let's bring it back in front of a council. Maybe the council can cancel that and, and put it further down to another date, like other things y'all do. Folks, this is not right. Not only that, this computer's a little bit, makes me want to shut it because it's catching my eyes. And the reason it's catching my eyes is because I'm down here on a camera. Why isn't it up here? Why isn't it back there? It is back there, but real small. If we're going to make changes, let's do it right. Put it in front of a study session, then bring it back to city council, then maybe a council member can say, you know what, Mr. Mayor, I think we need to postpone this for a couple more weeks. Thank you, Mr. Love. Uh, next is, is it Cindy Durrell, please? Did I say that right? It was Cindy. Thank you, Cindy. I moved out here to Independence about three or four years ago. My daughter just died a few years ago. I bought property because my grandson here has no parents. I'm about to pay the property off already in 13 payments. I bought the property for him because he has no parents. When I bought the property, there was adjoining businesses that were closed down. Now they're opening. They're, they've opened. That's okay. But um, they want me to zone my house and my property industrial, and I, don't, I didn't buy a private dead-end area in the wooded area. I bought the wooded area for him to play in, the woods. You know, he has his little acts and toys and things that he goes out there with. So he's not an inside boy all the time. You know, and um, and they want me to zone it. And not only that is, uh, I go back to the end of my property, and their fences are down along their property, and some of their things are falling into my yard, like doors, car parts, and I have all kinds of things in my yard from their um, business, car businesses. There's three different car businesses up there, and so someone is out. And then I, in the middle of the night, 
people come through there stealing from the car places and my dogs go crazy like coming through my property at night all the time now since the um, companies have been open right there at 15, what is it? 1507 U.S. 24 Highway. It's at 24 Highway and Park. There didn't used to be anything there, but now there's a tire shop and a couple mechanic shops, I think, which is, adjoins my backyard, their backyard and my backyard. Perfect place for theft. They've knocked the fence down, and they come through there all the time. They get out, carry us up through my backyard. Of course, it's just me and him there, so we're not going outside, you know. So I'd like to see if we could get something done about that. Uh, I don't want my property to be zoned industrial, and I'd like for them to fix their fence so to, to keep people from, I don't know, stealing or coming through my yard at the middle of the night. That's all I got. Thank you. Thank you very much. This will bring us to the consent agenda. Mr. Mayor, I'd move to approve the reports and recommendations of the city manager. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Thank you. Any council members wishing to pull an item for further discussion? Council member? I'd like to pull items four and seven. Okay. Council member Fears will pull numbers four and seven. Okay. Anyone else? Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. I'd like to pull item number nine. Thank you, Council Member Canalis. Any other items for consideration? Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Item number 23789. Uh, I didn't hear that. 237. 89. 89. Okay. Council Stewart. I'd like to pull that item. Okay. Any other items for individual discussion? And number 23790. Okay. And Councilmember McCandless would like to discuss 23790. Anyone else? And I'll go in the order they are listed on the, the list. And, uh, well, let's do the consent agenda first in each individual item. Uh, any, any further discussion? All right, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll on the consent agenda, please. Fears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. All right, that'll bring us back to item number four. Councilmember Fears, please proceed. Yes. Um, my understanding is that staff would like um, uh, a chance to respond to some questions. Uh, regarding this, and so I'm moving to postpone this for two weeks. Okay. Any further discussion on postponing this item for two weeks? You know, we do that like in a study session or something like that, or? No, next council meeting. Next council meeting, okay. Second. All right, we've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion on that to postpone it for two weeks? Hearing none. Uh, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll to postpone item number four for two weeks to the next council meeting. Fears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. And item number four uh, will be postponed for two weeks. That brings us to item number seven. Council Member Fears, please proceed. Yes. I'd like to inquire the city manager. Please proceed. Um, Mr. City Manager, if you could um, talk a little bit about this uh, lease, uh, and mostly I'm interested in the types of vehicles that we're going to be leasing um, and what the, the uh, difference from what we might be doing right now is, uh, that sort of stuff. Uh, my pleasure. So uh, this item is an agreement with uh, Enterprise. Uh, I know many... Um, residents will probably be familiar with them as a car rental service, but there's also another arm of their business, which is to uh, work with uh, different agencies, particularly municipalities, to uh, lease vehicles um, for fleet. Um, prior to our agreement with uh, Enterprise, um, the city really struggled with fleet replacement. Um, we had 
the dedicated sales tax to address the needs for the fire service, the police service, and of course the utilities had their um, uh, rates uh, revenue to pay for fleet replacement, but many of the other services, particularly general fund services like uh, code enforcement, uh, plan review, inspections, permitting, uh, did not have a, a fleet replacement budget. Uh, so oftentimes we had city employees driving around in vehicles with rusted out floorboards, um, vehicles that were well past their useful life, so we were spending way more on maintenance than what the replacement cost was, but again, it was a matter of not having funds to be able to do that. Uh, with this agreement with Enterprise, we are um, uh, now driving a fleet that's both safe for our employees to be in, but also um, not uh, outliving the useful life of those vehicles. Um, as an example um, that, that was recently shared with me, one of our vehicles uh, in our um, permitting division of Community Development Department had a um, annual maintenance budget of, of $900 for that one vehicle. Of the 19 trucks that we leased this last year, um, the total maintenance on those 19 vehicles was $562, so just about $300 less in total maintenance for 19 vehicles compared to the one. Um, functionally, the way this program works, um, we lease the vehicles. Um, after a few years, um, Enterprise then sells the vehicles, uh, and the proceeds from those sales are used to uh, fund the replacement of the next set of vehicles. Um, so you may have noticed that a lot of the vehicles in this fleet program are um, Ford trucks. Uh, that is for two reasons. One, many of the services that I'm describing require some off-road access, so driving over curbs, uh, driving onto job sites to do the different inspections that these groups do, uh, the, the um, uh, code enforcement services, et cetera. Um, but also, because we uh, get these at a much lower price in the lease, but then we sell them for market retail value, the proceeds of that program are what then allow us to fund uh, the vehicles uh, moving forward. So um, if we had to replace all the vehicles in our fleet today, that would be about $2.9 million. Um, but because of this lease program uh, for the, the amount listed in your packet there, uh, we're able to address city fleet in a much more financially responsible manner. Okay, thank you for that. Um, don't have any <coughs> concerns about the concept of leasing or, or anything like that. Uh, my, my real concern or question really becomes is, is, is you know, a whole fleet of F-250 or F-150s our, our best approach? And you know, would it be more economical to purchase other kinds of vehicles that maybe use less gas or, or whatever? And, and maybe it wouldn't. I don't know. But I guess I would just ask as we move forward in the leasing process and look at the vehicles that we choose, that we do that kind of analysis and and make the the best decision we can for the long term. So. I'm certainly happy to do that and your point well taken. The one thing I will say tonight, and then we'll certainly have the data moving forward, but I don't I don't want to leave the impression with you or your constituents that we're we're purchasing or leasing these vehicles, you know, at the sixty thousand, seventy thousand dollar rate that we would go as individual consumers and get these off of the lot at a local Ford dealership. Um, enterprise through their purchasing power is getting these at a very low rate but because they then do sell those like a consumer would, the proceeds of that are so great that that's what's allowing us to continuously fund this program without having to tap into our tax dollars to do so. Um, we'll continue to be thoughtful in our analysis and make sure that we're leveraging the best overall um, uh, market value for the council and the community. Okay, thank you. Mr. Mayor, move for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else have their further discussion on this item? Seeing none, uh, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll on item number seven. Ayers? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. Item number seven is approved six to zero. And that will bring us to Councilmember McCandless. Item number nine, you have the floor. Thank you. Uh, to inquire to the City Manager? Please proceed. Mr. Senior Manager, um, 
uh, artificial intelligence has gotten a bad rap among people, and I think this is one of those moments where we can look at AI as an advantage for municipalities. And I would ask you just to give an overview of what you anticipate this program will do for the city. Uh, certainly. So I, I would like to say that I believe, um, if, if memory holds correct, this is one of our first forays uh, as a city into artificial intelligence. Um, this program is going to help us be much more efficient with our um, predictive analytics uh, around our utility maintenance uh, program, specifically in uh, the IPL and the electric utility. So we spend millions of dollars in preventative maintenance every year for tree trimming so that when we hit um, wind storms or ice storms or other events that would cause damage to our power lines, hopefully our preventative maintenance has helped um, uh, stop some of that from occurring. With this software and with this program, it's going to be able to assess our tree canopy in the city and help us better understand the specific areas where we might be more susceptible to some of that storm damage uh, so that, again, this being a multi-million dollar program, we want to get the best return on investment we can. So this will help us target those investments, uh, working with our contractor who does our tree trimming program, so that we deploy them into the areas of the city that are most necessary, uh, and then help uh, avoid any of the disruptions to service to the residents when we hit those uh, storm events. Thank you very much. I move approval. Thank you, Council Member. Second. Anyone else? Are there further discussion? We have a second. Second. All right, I've got a motion and a second. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll on item number nine. Fears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. Item number nine is approved six to zero. That'll bring us to 23789. Councilmember Stewart, please proceed. I'll make a motion for approval on 23789. Second. Okay. okay, we've got a motion and a second. The floor is yours, Councilmember, if you'd like to make any comments or have any questions. Um, so I'm, this is related to the uh, the apartments on I-70 and Woods Chapel. I'm just not convinced that we need any new apartments at this point um, for a few reasons, but uh, I'm gonna be voting no on this and the rezoning. That's all I have, thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else, other further discussion on 23789? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Fears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? No. Canlis? Yes. Hobart? Yes. May Rowland? Yes. 23789 is approved 5 to 1. That brings us to 23790. Councilmember Canlis, you have the floor. And please make a motion in a second, please. Or a motion, please. Thank you. I move approval of this item. Second. We've got a motion in a second. Councilmember Canlis, please proceed. Uh, to inquire of the city manager. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. City Manager, this item came forward with a recommendation uh, that my understanding is seven, or excuse me, three yes, three no, which means that it did not receive a recommendation to uh, for approval from the Planning Commission. Do I understand that correctly? You do. And are you able to speak at all uh, about the reasons for the discussion? Um, I could I could ask if, if the council would indulge, I'll ask our community development director, Tom Scannell, to come forward and share a little bit more with you. Thank you. Good evening, Mayor, members of the council. My name is Tom Scannell, I'm the community development director. So the, so the planning commission considered this um, at a previous meeting. The discussion was focusing on the concerns of that the neighbors had. Um, the owners um, were following all of the uh, rules that the city has, has outlined within the UDO, um, but the neighbors still had concerns, uh, noise, traffic, those types of issues. Ultimately, the uh, Planning Commission voted. We had three in, in favor and uh, three against the application. Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Uh, if I may um, inquire. Absolutely, please proceed. Uh, Mr. City Manager, if I might 
address Mr. Scannell. Please, sir. Uh, Director Scannell, it's my understanding, though, that the owners uh, operate multiple Airbnbs and that, in fact, some of their business licenses, either for that property or other properties, have, lap ha have lapsed and that they were not current either on that property or other properties that they owned. I don't recall if this one was operating prior to going through the approval process. Um, and let me just look real quick. That's something that we generally note in our uh, staff report to the, to the planning commission. Did you have, I talked to uh, Becky about it and she usually updates me on those. before they come up to vote because, as you know, I'm a little bit yeah, so in interested in, the, in people's. So in this one, we don't, we don't have any of that information on whether they were, they were operating beforehand or not. It didn't, doesn't say on any of the planning commission Correct, that that yes. came up. Yes. I'm sorry. Oh, that's what Becky told me. I'm going to look up. I'm trying to look up my email real quick. Okay. <laughs> Councilmember, while you're looking at that email, uh, Councilmember Hobart, or excuse me, Councilmember Fears has a question. Can I, can I interject and, and then we'll come back to you, Councilmember? Please proceed. Well, I, this may help Councilmember Hobart. Um, there is in the paperwork we received a legal protest petition on that. Um, is that what you're referring to? Is that what you're looking for? Oh, this one is the legal protest, isn't it? There has to be five votes to over, overturn Correct. this anyway, the, overturn the, the declination. In other words, we have to have five votes to approve this anyway. Hang on a second, I found it. Okay, uh, here's what here's what Ms. Hake sent me. Um, the owner was Foster Investments. He has two business licenses with Independence. Both of them are not active. They were up for renewal on 323 and, and were not. Both of those were under the name of Foster Investments. He also owns a business named Sean Buys Houses KC with the address of 3909 South Phelps Road has no business license with the city in his name. So she says it's more, more not necessarily a landlord problem, but definitely a license problem. So that was, that was her take on it. So considering it takes five votes and since it didn't pass uh, and Becky found it to be he was not current on business licensing. I'll be a no on this um, without any doubt. So, thank you, Councilmember. Councilmember Member I'm done. Thank you very okay. much. Councilmember Member Fierce, anything on it? Anyone else have a further discussion on this item? Okay. Uh, we've got a motion uh, in front of us on this item 23790. If there's no further discussion, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Fears? No. Perkins? No. Stewart? No. McCandless? No. Hobart? No. Mayor Rowan? No. And uh, item 23790 fails 0 to 6. And that takes us past all the consent item agendas. This takes us to our first public hearing. And this is a full public hearing. And is there anyone wishing to speak in favor? Of, well, Sorry, I should let city staff go first. Good evening, Mayor and members of the council. My name is Tom, Tom Scannell. I'm the Community Development Director. So this is the, um, or the public hearing in the ordinance for the uh, Chapter 100 plan and uh, bond document approval for the uh, North Point project. Uh, this 
project will consist of um, 320 units. It's going to be a mix of uh, studio, one bedroom, and two bedroom apartments. This uh, project is generally located north of uh, the intersection of uh, Woods Chapel Road and I-70. It's a $70.2 million project. The incentive includes uh, property tax abatement. Uh, that abatement would go on for uh, 20 years after the uh, project is completed. Uh, as part of that, there is a sales tax exemption on construction materials. Um, all of this would be um, uh, debt service would be covered by the uh, developer. Um, as part of this, this project, an annual pilot payment would be made to uh, those taxing ju jurisdictions. Uh, those payments uh, uh, far exceed what the uh, current uh, uh, property brings in as far as uh, pilots. Uh, that concludes staff's presentation and we're available for questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, Madam City Clerk, go ahead and read the bill, and then we'll have uh, comments from the public. A public hearing for the taxable industrial development revenue bonds for the ERA apartment project. Full public hearing. Thank you. Anyone here to speak in favor or opposition to this item? Anyone here to speak in favor of or opposition to this item? So I'd like to and please pronounce your name and... Yes, uh, Brian Benjamin, I'm speaking on behalf of North Point Development, 3315 North Oak Traffic Way, Kansas City, okay. Missouri. Uh, we had a little bit of a technical difficulty with the electronic slides, but there should be some printouts and I have a couple extras if anybody needs, needs one. Okay. See there. Right there. Uh, so I'm sure, as many of you are familiar with North Point Development, uh, we have two primary uh, core business units on our industrial side, which you're much more familiar with, with the Eastgate Commerce Center. Uh, but we also have our multifamily uh, side of the business that we've been involved with in the past 11 years. Um, the uh, the multifamily side of our business, we've, we've kept true to our roots here and stayed local uh, Kansas City base with our headquarters here in Kansas City. And we've had a number of developments all over the Kansas City metro. Um, one of the uh, highlights I wanted to point out too with our management team, we have a local in-house management team. It takes a lot of pride in uh, the work they do and it really shows in how our communities, not only how they look, but how they, uh, how they function to uh, achieve engagement in the surrounding community. We do a lot of partnering with local businesses and uh, special resident events, things like that. So it shows in the amount of awards our management team wins year after year and uh, really the pride they, they put into making our communities the best they can be. Uh, so for the site location, I think it's been covered previously, but uh, this is at I-70 and uh, Woods Chapel Road, northwest corner of that intersection. It represents uh, about a $70 million total investment and uh, across five buildings, um, 318 to 320 total uh, apartment units with a predominance in one bedroom. So this is predominantly studio and one bedroom, 68% uh, studio and one bedroom units on our proposal. Uh, we have a full package of uh, Amenities, Class A amenities as well too. Happy to answer any questions on those, but we'll keep it brief here. Uh, next slide would be the uh, um, demographics that we see for some of our communities. Uh, one, one comparison we took was Summit Square in the Donovan, down in Lee Summit, just 15 minutes on the road here. Uh, we have a lot of uh, residents that move from not only outside the city, uh, but uh, the city of Lee Summit, for example, here, but across town, across the metro, and even across the state or country. Uh, so a community like this, high quality community is going to bring in high quality residents. Uh, it's going to attract new folks to the city of independence and primarily renters by choice. We have a lot of folks that like the lifestyle amenities that are provided and uh, the excellent management experience that our staff provides. Uh, so you get a lot of renters by choice, whether it's um, dual income, no kids or uh, empty nesters uh, downsizing. So we have a lot of uh, families or sorry, not families, but residents that come from single family homes. Uh, so again, just trying to give you an idea of the, 
of the type of uh, people that are coming to this community. Uh, next up is the employment centers and the distance to them. So we are triangulated at this site between three of the larger employment centers with healthcare being the uh, largest uh, industry in the city. Uh, we've got Center Point Medical Center to the west, Children's Mercy East also to the west, and then St. Mary's off to the east. All of those are within a five minute drive. Um, some of the discussions we've had even with uh, Center Point Medical Center is that they, they have challenges, they've gotten feedback when trying to attract uh, um, medical professionals and traveling nurses, um, the like to their campus, they don't have any quality new housing options in the area, so they end up picking something else. They go, whether it's across town or to another city in the country, because that's kind of one of their top takeaways. So they're thrilled for the potential of this investment and the development here, um, and really think it's gonna be a win-win to strengthen the employment base. <coughs> so next up is the the ask that uh, Mr. Scannell uh, went through with the use of the conduit revenue bonds, uh, the existing annual taxes on the, on the site being vacant are $1,300 a year. Uh, with the proposed plan, year one payment is just shy of $165,000 annually, a uh, majority of which goes to the school district. So $123,000 in annual revenue to the school district, um, which is impactful, certainly. We've met with them a number of times, and. Uh, We'll get to that on the next slide, but one thing I just wanted to touch on too was the, the certainty this provides. Uh, this, this is a project that we believe in, but also needs to be and show certainty to potential uh, lenders and, and achieve certain underwriting metrics, which are described in the plan. Uh, having this provides a certainty to make sure this can move forward. <coughs> uh, so finally on the school district impact, we did meet with uh, school district leadership on several occasions and got some good feedback both on what they expect to see from a community like this with the predominantly one bedrooms, but also uh, their, their costs and the, the cost to, to bring new housing into their district. Um, one of the key takeaways there was uh, that it's about $12,000 a year to bring a new child to the school district, um, but only about a little less than 50%, 44% uh, comes from property tax revenue. <coughs> so again, kind of paring that down, that's a little less than 6,000 Per, uh, per child in annual revenue to, to bring a new child to the school district. In discussing with them, we also covered the fact that we have uh, an anticipated number of about 16 school-age children at the high end. That's based on uh, the existing properties we manage and what we've seen, and they tended to agree with that. They, they agreed that it was not gonna exceed that, and that's probably even on the high end. But even if you were to take all that together, that, that represents a need for them of about $85,000 a year annually. Uh, with our uh, proposed pilot plan and the year one revenue of 123,000, that far exceeds it. And then if you add into the fact that this is a community that is still, it's, it's not entirely walkable, we're gonna have plenty of vehicles in this community. <coughs> the personal property tax revenue from the vehicles is impactful. It adds almost double the impact to the school district, which we have shown here. So when putting all this together, it, this, this represents a net positive to the school district. They did not disagree with that. So just wanted to make sure we cover that. Um, with that, happy to open it up to any questions. Any questions? Thank you for your consideration. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. So thank you very much. Um, this question may be for city manager. Uh, one of the concerns brought up by neighbors was uh, water runoff. There is a small creek uh, <coughs> behind this. Uh, Representative or Council Member Fears and I went and walked the property there. Um, there's some grading issues. Are you concerned about any of that in your development? Uh, there's certainly a number of engineering challenges with the site that were part of the reason it's sat vacant uh, for as long as it has. Um, we have a plan that's, that's described and, dis and shown in detail for our stormwater management. It's in the uh, preliminary development plans that have been submitted and reviewed by city staff. Uh, as with anything, it's an engineering challenge, but it's, it's something that we certainly think we can plan around and effectively develop around it. I know one of the other concerns of neighbors was that the building would be too tall. Um, I understand that you guys have adjusted your tree line to provide a little more buffer um, do you anticipate that the height of the building will be taller than the trees that, that the neighbors down the way would be able to see? 
Uh, no, we do not. And yes, we did have some more uh, details on that. We'd be happy to share them uh, under separate cover, but that was covered in detail at the Planning Commission hearing. And you're correct, we, we studied it from multiple vantage points. In the existing buffer that's out there now that the, is slated to remain, the portions that are slated to remain, would uh, screen the roof lines of the new buildings. Not to mention, we also have a plan to uh, plant evergreen trees because one of the feedback comments we heard is it's all deciduous trees out there. So about this time of year, it gets a lot more opened up. So planting a mix of evergreen and seasonal trees is gonna at least help to have some impact on that in the winter too. Very good, thank you very much. Okay. Thank you, Council Member. Anyone else other further questions? Mr. Benjamin. Yes, sir. Um, did you attend any of the, you had a couple of meetings with some of the residents out there. Mm -hmm. Did you personally attend those? Yes, yes I did. Um, so I think it was actually even mentioned earlier tonight, there were a couple of meetings. Uh, the intent of the first meeting was to f keep the focus initially on the most impacted residents. So this was not something required by city code or city ordinance or anything like that. It was a, a listening session early on in our process to hear from the ones most impacted. After that meeting, we had our larger hearing, or sorry, not hearing, but open house where we got to meet the residents uh, from the entire uh, subdivision, uh, multiple neighboring subdivisions. Um, beyond that, we've, we've had discussions. We've uh, tried to communicate. There's a lot of good, healthy dialogue that occurred at Planning Commission as well, too. Um, it, there's plenty of different points that have been discussed at, at length that we can dive into if needed, but to save the time, I won't go into those unless we have just, a specific one. I, I just want, I appreciate you uh, giving a rundown of that. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ask if there were any other uh, major points that were brought up that you have changed plans on or addressed. <coughs> Tree lines, sight lines, drainage, sound, noise, traffic, mm -hmm. any of those types of things. Uh, we could run down them kind of point by point, uh, but the if I there think we, if there are a few highlights, mm -hmm. yeah, the, I think we kind of touched on the sight lines aspect of things, uh, the traffic study uh, on that discussion topic. Uh, I know that there was a lot of discussion about the time of day and the, the peak impact. Uh, the study was conducted per the IT use manual for the site that meets all city code. We we listened and heard about the existing school. Uh, situation as well too and have some ideas how we can partner to help address some of that. We actually believe there are some simple implementable solutions that aren't going to be difficult to address it. Um, aside from the school impact, uh, the traffic study really shows a, a picture of an alternative use of what could have been with the commercial or medical office and it's significantly more. If you want to focus on peak hour or if you want to focus on total daily vehicles, it's 3x. In, in almost both scenarios of what actuals and what the uh, actual and the traffic study uh, presented there. Uh, there was definitely certain feedback about the school district impact as well too, which we, we kind of covered previously in this presentation. Uh, beyond that, if there's anything else particular, I'm happy to cover it. Mr. Hall. So um, going out and driving around that area, mm -hmm. there's a big long-term storage. There's a couple of motels uh, in the Blue Springs side. There's gas stations. These would all you know, be things that are nearby uh, the proposed apartments. Are you concerned about any of those causing problems for the apartment complex? Uh, no, I, I don't think they will. Um, one thing that we've seen time and time again is that investment begets more investment and the, the right-sized activity that our development will bring, we believe should encourage more capital investment in some of those properties. When hotels have guests of our residents or family of our residents, many of which had moved here from out of town to come stay, they're, they're going to pick up business and they're going to compete for more business to, to retain that. Um, Aside from, sorry, what was the other part of it? Just the other business owners in general. Well, mm -hmm. I, I just want to get a picture of what's on that corner. So right. There's long-term storage, there's a yep. couple of gas stations, there's a Kroger repair shop, mm -hmm. um, there's hotels. Yep. So like, but any of that would, you know, would, would you agree with that? No, I, I don't think so. 
Mayor? Yes, if, if, I can, if I can interrupt, I just want to make sure we're, we stay on track. So right now we're mm -hmm. under the public hearing for the financing plan. And so, and I, and I know we've kind of strayed off of that at this point, and I want to try to bring us back because the next public hearing is going to be on the rezoning, which is really, I think, at least some of the, the most recent comments and questions are really relate to more to that than the financing. So we could bring it back to the, to the financing portion and finish that public hearing and ordinance, and then we can move on to the rezoning. Point well taken. Thank, Thank you. you. So on that note, uh, Mr. City Manager, are there any risks to the city from the arrangement that you have for this apartment complex? There is not. The industrial revenue bonds are a financing mechanism approved by state statute. Um, because the city is the local taxing jurisdiction that can um, collect and or approve sales tax, that's why state statute mandates that the council um, approve or disapprove of the application made but in no way, shape, or form are the city finances um, responsible for or at stake uh, with this project. Any else other questions on the financing portion? Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. City Manager, which school district is, are these property taxes going to be going to? The Blue Spring School District. Okay. All right. Um, so nothing to independence at all? Well, there's many of our independence residents that live in the Blue Spring School District. Okay, I was, okay, I understand that. Um, I guess, I don't know. I guess my major concern with this thing is, along with the residents' concerns, which I feel for them, I don't think I would want that if I bought a house out there and then all of a sudden there's an apartment complex next to me. Um, But if we the Chapter 100 bonds, order, please. that means if they purchase anything for supplies, they don't pay sales tax. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So we have all these people moving in there, and I just, I don't know what we're going to get back because I think they're going to go shop in Blue Springs. I just don't see them coming to Independence to get any of that sales tax back. So like I said before, I'm maybe voting no against this. Thank you. Anyone else? Other further discussion? Uh, Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. City Manager, a question on the the use tax for that. So anyone that would um, buy something from Amazon or somewhere else and and you know have it delivered there, that would be um, we would receive use tax on that, correct? That is correct. So okay. use tax is tied to address uh, point of origin of the transaction being made. So because these are independent residents, uh, presumably um, if the project's approved, then uh, that sales tax would flow uh, to the city um, via the uh, voter approved use tax. Anything else? Okay. Anyone else? Other items for the discussion on the financing portion? Okay. This will close the public hearing. Oh, oh uh, you're right. Excuse me. I apologize. I need to have it open, so please come forward because I should have asked again three times if anybody wanted to speak in favor of opposition. So thank you for that. Um, I guess this would classify as opposition. Um, he brought up the school district and they're in favor. Um, that's probably the on the record answer from the Blue Springs School District. Having spoke, knowing people that have spoke to higher ups in the Blue Springs School District, they don't go on record saying that they don't want kids going to their schools. They're in the business of saying we will education for all. I have a child at Paul Kinder Middle School and I have one at Blue Springs High School. They both atten also attended the grade school, Sunny Point. And those schools are packed. They shut down hallways in my son's middle school because there's too many kids to let them flow freely. They're at capacity right now. The high school's the same even with the ex expansion that they just had. My daughter says, you can't walk down the halls. Blue Springs School District is a destination school district. People will move there just to get their kids in the school district. I don't buy that there's only gonna be possibly 18 kids at these apartments going to the Blue Springs School District. I think that data is inaccurate and the Blue Springs School District won't go on record saying that they don't want to educate kids. They're gonna nod 
and say yes to North Point. That's all I have on this part. Thank you. Anyone else? Come forward and please state your name. This gentleman raised his hand first, Mr. Love, and then I'll call on you, Mr. Love. Tim Dayton, 4225 South White Sands Court. Uh, to echo Brian's comments, yeah, they cannot speak in opposite. That's discrimination against students, right? So they cannot go on record saying that. Now, I have had conversations with the school district where they have said, said specifically that their big concerns are that with a level pay system, they can't, uh, they can't attribute to whatever the cost increases are going to be in the coming years. And so if their cost per student goes up, that is very difficult for them to ascertain. They also do have very diff they do have very significant concerns about this apartment complex having the number of students that North Point is claiming. That right across the highway is the Autumn Place Apartments, and that is one of the biggest school district bus stops for, for apartments that are one, two, and three bedroom apartments, just like what they're building now. More kids get off the buses at those school at that school stop than in any other spot in the district. So they know that they're going to have more kids in that, those apartment complexes than the 20 that they're, they're calculating based off the $123,000. They're giving you information because they're telling you that that's what the, you want to hear. They're telling the district this information, and the district can't respond on record saying that they discriminate against, discriminate against, discriminate against students. And you guys are just taking the information that they're listening to and saying, yeah, that, that's, that's acceptable. So just... Pay more attention to what, what information you're being given and talk to the school district yourself. Find the information from themselves. Do the research on how this actually impacts from a per student count. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Love. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. Kenneth Love, 16808 East George Franklin Drive. I speak out against this place due to the fact if you do your research, they don't need no bond. They're rich enough to do it themselves. Why do they come to us? We're not really gaining that much out of it. What we're gaining out of it is we've looked past what our council and leaders has talked about in the past, single family homes. We need more single family homes. Every time we bring up single family homes, the only thing this council has approved is apartment complexes. Wait a minute. If we talk about the Bass Pro TIF Fund and that, I think they owe us some money. Why aren't we beating the hammer down on the doors to get our money from them? But we approved a big fancy apartment complex there. Then we turn around and approve another apartment complex on Jackson Drive. Just recently, this year, We have to talk about the financing of the project. Well, I, I am speaking about it because of the finances that y'all have approved so many apartment complexes. We've got another one that's going to be going up off of 39th Street and where the old J.C. Penney buildings was. Again, this corporation can afford to build on their own, just like if I want to extend my own business, yeah, I could have the right to come. Nah, but I don't want the city's money. I don't want the responsibility. I don't want somebody pointing a finger at me. Single family homes is what we need in the city of Independence. And if you're going to approve something out there, I'm sure the residents are speaking the same out there over there as single family homes, not three stories. He couldn't even tell you the height. He could not tell you the height of Mr. this Mayor, apartment yes, complex. Please proceed. Point of order. If we're talking about the financing package, then we don't need to talk about height of buildings right, right. now. Well, wait a minute. He was allowed to stand up here and speak to y'all out, out off the, on record about different things until our attorney brought it to your attention of what we need to go back. Why don't I have the same equal treatment? Because Mr. I'm Kenneth yes, Love. Please proceed. Order. Point of order. Go ahead. Then he can come back and speak at the other public hearing. Right, because there's going to be a public hearing right after this to address okay, the issue. I will. Thank you. Uh, just to correct, uh, just to make sure we're on the same page. Right. So the the second, this is a full public hearing on the financing. 
the public hearing on the rezoning is a new information only public hearing because there was already a public hearing on the rezoning at the planning commission meeting. Okay, I was there, it was about four hours. So I just want to, just, just to be clear, so there is not, and, and no new information has been put forward per the process in the city code. So there will not be an opportunity for additional public comment under the second public hearing. I just want to make sure everyone understands that. Nope, point well taken, thank okay. you. Uh, very, very good. Any other further discussion on the financing portion of this project? Seeing none, uh, Madam City Clerk, uh, well, we'll close the public hearing then, unless there's anyone else to speak about the financing. Anyone else to speak in favor or opposition to the financing? Anyone else to speak in favor of opposition to the financing? Anyone else speak in favor or opposition to the financing? Seeing none, we'll close the uh, public hearing. Madam City Clerk, please read 23101, please. An ordinance approving a plan for the, an industrial development project authorizing the City of Independence, Missouri to issue its taxable industrial development revenue bonds in a principal amount not to exceed $70,200,000 and authorizing and approving certain documents and actions in connection therewith. Second and final reading. Thank you. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Fears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? No. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes, and the item passes six to one. This takes us to our second public hearing. We'll open this up. This that, that's just for the record, that's five to one. Oh, thank you very much. It is five to one, thank you very much. And this is, takes us to our second public hearing. Madam City Clerk, please read the uh, bill. A public hearing for the application by Brian Benjamin requesting a rezoning from C2 General Commercial to R30 PUD High Density Residential Planned Unit Development for the property located at 1901 Woods Chapel Road. New information only. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor, members of the council. My name is Rick Arroyo. I'm the uh, community de Assistant Community Development Director here at the city. This rezoning was considered by Planning Commission on September 12th of this year. Planning Commission did vote in favor of this rezoning. Uh, this is a request from North Point Development to rezone the property near the northwest corner of I-70 and Woods Chapel uh, to the current C2 commercial to the higher density residential R30 PUD for the E era apartment complex. I have no new, new information to provide. Thank you. Okay, this will close the public hearing. Madam City Clerk, please read 23096, please. An ordinance approving a rezoning from District C2 General Commercial to District R30 PUD High Density Residential Plan Unit Development and approving a preliminary development plan for the property located northwest of Interstate 70 and Woods Chapel Road in Independence, Missouri. Second and final reading. Thank you. Any further discussion? Madam, here. please proceed. Um, I spent a lot of time thinking about this development. Uh, I went over all the site plans, uh, looked at the traffic study, uh, reviewed the emails sent to me by Mr. Caton, um, went out and drove through Stone Canyon, uh, went and visited some of the properties, uh, including residences at Burlington Creek, which North Point developed 10 years ago, just to be sure that they were keeping up with their maintenance. The property was pristine. Uh, I know that there have been concerns that they'll build it and that they won't take care of it over years. So going back to look at their original property, uh, they certainly have done so. Um, I did speak to elected officials in communities that have North Point properties to find out if they had had concerns, if they'd had complaints, if they had codes issues, uh, and the answer was no on those. Um, because uh, this property has sat vacant for a long time and certainly the commercial property market has been weak, um, this area really is going to be ripe for this kind of development. I think it's actually gonna raise the quality of the neighborhood there. Um, for that reason, I'll be voting in favor of this. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Councilmember. Anyone else for the discussion? 
Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. So, um, like Council Member McCandless uh, mentioned earlier, um, you know, took time to visit the property, to walk through the property, talk to neighbors, listen to concerns. Um, you know, um, one of the concerns I heard from uh, some of the neighboring businesses was a serious issue with homelessness there. And indeed, we saw that um, when we walked the property. Uh, this will certainly take care of that problem. And, um, um, you know, uh, neighboring businesses uh, shared that. You know, we did, we did visit, uh, I did take the time to visit North Point uh, property in Lee Summit, uh, the Donovan, and, you know, I, I guess I want to be really clear. This is a beautiful facility. It's well done, well maintained, well taken care of, um, and, um, you know, I did receive information and read all the information from the subdivision president. It's the only person I heard any kind of um, concern from, uh, personally at least. Um, you know, there has been a traffic study done. Traffic study um, is, you know, came back that it would not negatively impact that, that area. Um, the... Uh, um, there's a substantial buffer around the property to the subdivision. Um, I was I'm glad to hear tonight that, that it won't be able to be viewed from the subdivision. So I think that's important. Um, and, uh, you know, all the entities will receive that, that receive tax from this property will receive more tax than what they're currently getting on a vacant piece of property. Regarding um, our, um, the, since this is on rezoning in particular, um, you know, we had a housing study done, and one of the things I want to mention in that in the the in the area called housing gap analysis, it talks about encouraging the development of more upscale single-family homes and multifamily units to keep higher-paid professionals from moving to Lee Summit or Blue Springs, and that's certainly what we've seen, and so this. Um, certainly will be a step in the right direction for that. You know, um, it's not always easy to be a council member. Um, you know, our role is to determine what we think is best for the city as a whole. Um, you know, I believe this property will be improved significantly. Um, my opinion is that. Um, so, you know, I think um, I, I, I do understand con the concerns. My opinion, though, is that this will be a good development for our city uh, with honorable developers and that um, it they will be good neighbors if uh, given the opportunity. And so I'll be voting in favor. Thank you. Anyone else have the further discussion? Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Thank you. I want to say thanks to the, to the folks who did come up here and speak. We do listen and, and do pay attention. The comments and the conversation about the Blue Springs School District not taking a position, I say shame on them. That is their job to advocate for their district. ISD advocates for our district, and the reason why I know the people that are sitting on that back row, they came and wrote letters of, of support against a development in the Kentucky Hills. They came and spoke at our planning commission. They were present here. If Blue Springs had a problem with this, they should have really said something. They sit on our economic development boards. They have communications with this man right here. They have communication with our mayor here. If there's a problem, and I'm not saying there isn't, they need to advocate for their district. Ours do. Independent School District sure does. Fort Osage sure does. And if there was that big of a problem, they should have said something to us. So with that, I'm just going to leave my comments as they are. Thank you, Council Member. Anyone else for their discussion? Seeing none. Uh, Madam City Clerk, please uh, read the bill. 23096, an ordinance approving a rezoning from District C2 General Commercial to District R30 PUD high density residential plan unit development and approving a preliminary development plan for the property located northwest of Interstate 70 in Woods Chapel Road in Independence, Missouri. Second and final here, reading. Thank you very much. Seeing no further discussion, uh, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. 
Spears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? No. McCandless? Yes. Cobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes, and 23096 passes five to one. This takes us to our third public hearing. We'll open that. Um, and this is a new information only public hearing. Please proceed. Thank you again. This rezoning was considered by Planning Commission on September 12th of this year. Planning Commission's vote was not in favor of this rezoning. Uh, this request is to rezone a property at 1507 West US 24 Highway from C2 General Commercial to C3 Service Commercial for the purpose of allowing vehicle storage and allowing general or what would be considered more heavier automotive repair than what the C2 currently allows. I have no new information to provide. Thank you very much. This will close the uh, public hearing. Madam City Clerk, please read the item. 23-099, an ordinance approving re a rezoning from District C2 General Commercial to District C3 Service Commercial for the property at 1507 West US Highway 2024 in Independence, Missouri, second and final reading. Thank you. Any discussion on this item? Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Thank you. Um, I will be voting no on this rezoning at 1507. Um, I'm not in favor for that upzoning for all the, the reasons. If, if my colleagues know where that's at, it's the old Tom's RV lot that sits down the gully. Oh, yeah. There are a lot of problems and weirdness there, and as Ms. Um, Durrell was saying, so I will be voting no on this. Thank you, Council Member. Anyone else? Further discussion? No, I would, uh, I, uh, I will be following my, uh, fellow council members vote on that would encourage the same. Thank you. Any other further discussion? Okay. Uh, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll on 23-099. Fears? No. Perkins? No. Stewart? No. Canlis? No. Hobart? No. Mayor Rowland? No. 23-099 fails 0-6. And this takes us to our fourth public hearing. We'll open the public hearing. This is also, this is a full public hearing. And uh, Mr. Royo, please proceed. Thank you again. This was a code amendment that was considered by Planning Commission on September 12th of this year. Planning Commission did recommend in favor of this amendment. Uh, this is a multiple sections related to vehicle sales, gasoline and fuel sales, motor vehicle repairs, and car washes. I have no further information to provide. Any further discussion or questions on this? Madam City Clerk, or excuse me, Madam Council Member, please, perfe <laughs> please forgive me. To inquire of the City Manager. Uh, Mr. City Manager, uh, have we done this before? I, I know we have, but I'd like you to talk about how we have used this kind of up cap on businesses and what effect that has had. Uh, yeah, this is a tool that the city does have prior precedent on. One of the more recent and high profile examples was um, the city council adopting an amendment to the unified development ordinance to cap the number of payday lenders uh, in the city. So uh, similar to what's being proposed tonight, um, the city uh, staff researched and determined uh, what we thought would be um, a serviceable number of these without having um, an oversaturation in the marketplace, um, set a pro rata cap, so you take the number, um, say that there's one for, in this case, every 7,500 residents, so as the city grows or shrinks, the cap would grow or shrink. Um, all current businesses would be grandfathered in, so we wouldn't have to go pick you know, a certain number and tell them you have to close. Um, this would happen through natural attrition over time. So in, in the case for tonight, if a car wash were to close, um, then that would reduce um, the number of available license. And until we got down below the cap or the city grew at such a rate, then we needed more. But the most recent example that I think is high profile and similar is our payday loan cap that we authorize now. Um, and that number has gone down considerably. From yeah, it, when you passed it, it was 14 or so, and now it's down to eight by yes, natural attrition. For natural attrition, that is correct. And I just want to be clear that for um, commercial areas, the city council did not approve every one of these car washes that have come in. They met the requirement for um, the district and therefore were able to build those. Um, we certainly have seen a mushrooming of the number of 
car washes in the city uh, and, and also in the perimeter around the city. So they may not all be located within Independence, but they are on the borderlands in Kansas City. So it sure feels like a lot. So I really appreciate this lid on the number uh, that we can have in the city. So thank you very much. Certainly. Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Look, you can't have 89 million car lots and not have all these car washes to wash them in, right? <laughs> this is how it goes around here. Well, that's why we're capping the number of car lots as well. We've, we've reached the max for both. That's, so I appreciate yes, we that. have. Thank you, Mr. City Mayor. Would anyone like to challenge the council members' numbers? Yeah, I, I'm I would, just teasing. No, I'm they teasing. would not. <laughs> 89 they are 100% accurate, good. as always. <laughs> Thank you, council members. I, I do have a question. Um, Please proceed. Uh, city manager. Um, Please proceed. So the the limits that we have established, those were based on what? How did how were those developed? If you could say a little bit more about that. Yeah, um, several factors. Probably the most um, uh, weighted factor was researching best practices in other communities. Um, also trying to determine um, you know demand, what we see through um, the various um, indicators that we have, things like sales tax revenues and things like that that would indicate how much saturation there is in a marketplace, um, geographically where these are located in the city. Um, so through a combination of industry best practices, uh, hard and fast data that we had, and then mapping uh, the inventory that's currently available, um, kind of settle on what we thought would be a sweet spot of enough to meet market demand without oversaturating any one use uh, in the community. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? This is a full public hearing. Anyone speak in favor or in opposition to this item? Anyone want to speak in favor or opposition to it? Anyone want to speak in favor or opposition? Seeing none, I'll close this public hearing. Madam City Clerk, please read the bill. 23-100, an ordinance amending the Unified Development Ordinance, Chapter 14 of the Independent City Code pertaining to vehicle sale gasoline and fuel sales, motor vehicle repair, and car washes. This addresses item 4.2.E of the 2023 City of Independence Action Plan, second and final reading. Any further discussion? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll on 23-100, please. Beers? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowan? Yes. 23-100 passes in favor 6 to 0. Uh, this takes us to second readings. Madam City Clerk, please read 23-094. An ordinance authorizing the acceptance of a grant award from the U.S. Department of Justice Office of Justin, Justice Programs in the amount of $400,000 for a body-worn camera policy and implementation program for the Independence Police Department for the project period of October 1st, 2023 through September 30th, 2026. This ad addresses item 3.1G, update public safety technology systems of the 2023 City of Independence Action Plan, second and final reading. Thank you, Madam City Clerk. Any further discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Fears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. 23094 passes 6 to 0. Madam City Clerk, can you read 23095, please? An ordinance granting a utility and fiber easement to Tillman Infrastructure LLC, a Delaware limited liability company, across part of the commonly known address of 14520 East 39th Street. Second and final reading. Any discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Fears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. May Rowland? Yes. Item number 23095 passes 6 to 0. Madam City Clerk, please read 23097. 
an ordinance amending the City of Independence City Code by amending Chapter 17, Municipal Services Regulations, making necessary updates, clarifying right-of-way policy, and updating floodplain policy. Second and final reading. Any discussion on this item? Mr. C Please Mr. proceed. Mr. City Manager, could you just give an overview of the intent of this ordinance? Yes, certainly. Um, the, the intent of this ordinance is to further streamline uh, both the city's development uh, process uh, as well as to uh, make sure that our policies are in line uh, with industry best practices as well as um, some of the um, industry regulations that are out there. Is there any need that, that we are in compliance with federal floodplain designations? Is that part of that or is that something completely separate? This, this would have some bearing on that as well. Okay, thank you very much. Anyone else other further discussion on this item? Seeing none, Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Fears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. Item number 23097 passes 6 0. And Madam City Clerk, could you please read 23098? an ordinance adopting amendments to the fiscal year 2022 to 2023 budget, which was approved by ordinance number 19340, second and final reading. Any discussion on this item? Mr. Mayor. Please proceed. Uh, Mr. City Manager, can you just explain why the budgetary variance? Yes, uh, this is the quarter four amendment. So as the, the council probably recalls each quarter, uh, finance department accounts for uh, changes in the budget um, from what was adopted. Primarily, this is recognizing and accounting for uh, city grants that were received and making sure we've accounted for those. Um, we do have an appropriation uh, request here from General Fund Reserves for $5,195 uh, to support the city clerk's office um, due to the number of city code changes that were made. Uh, those exceeded budgetary appropriations um, to update code uh, so that that was in compliance. Uh, so that is the only direct uh, impact. Everything else is just uh, recognizing and accepting the grants that the city's been awarded and the council has approved. Thank you for that clarification. Anyone else other further discussion? Madam City Clerk, please call the roll. Fears? Yes. Perkins? Yes. Stewart? Yes. McCandless? Yes. Hobart? Yes. Mayor Rowland? Yes. Item number 23098 passes six, uh, six in favor, zero opposed. This takes us to our first readings. Madam City Clerk, please read the, the items. 23-102, an ordinance amending the Unified Development Ordinance, Chapter 14 of the Independent City Code pertaining to multifamily housing. Mr. Any discussion Mayor? on this item? Please proceed. Normally, first readings, we don't have a big discussion, but uh, it's, it's important for people to understand why we're looking at multifamily housing. Certainly, we've had discussions this evening about upkeep and maintenance. Uh, could you please just give an overview of this? Yes, um, as the councilwoman stated, um, with the um, recent projects that have been approved as well as the ones that are forthcoming, uh, we want to make sure uh, that the standard remains high for the product, uh, that we don't just speak to quality, but that we mandate it uh, in our code. Uh, so uh, as Councilmember Fears was noting earlier, some of these types of projects have traditionally gone to our peer cities. Uh, we are updating our city code to reflect uh, what many of those other cities who are a bit ahead of us in the development game uh, so that our standard will uh, meet or exceed the set by those other municipalities. discussion all right uh, madam city clerk please read the second item 23-103 an ordinate an ordinance approving a rezoning from district c1 neighborhood commercial to district c2 general commercial for the property located at 2500 north liberty street in independence missouri thank you very much and this brings us to councilmember comments councilmember stewart we'll start with you uh, nothing tonight mayor thank you thank you Councilmember Robert Perkins. Thank you, Mayor. A couple things. One real quick. This, the first reading that we, we, the last first reading that we had, just want to make a note. 
for uh, my colleagues here, that was the uh, rezoning up change that um, the folks from Kentucky Hills were speaking about. So just put that on your mental note. Second is the um, list of happenings and square events that are getting ready to take place here. It's November now, hard to believe, which means um, fun, cool things outside. So November 9th through 11th is going to be the open houses. November 11th, Veterans Day Parade at 11 a.m. And Veterans Day Play, waiting for MacArthur at 7 p.m. November 17th, Square Lighting, 6 p.m. Visits with Santa, Crafts and Games at the Uptown Market. If you're able, bring a toy or contribution for the CSL Christmas Store. November 25th, Shop Small Breakfast with Santa, 10 a.m., my favorite, December 1st, Living Windows. And of course, you can find details at www.indepsquare.com. Anything else, Council Member? That's it. All right, very good. Council Member Fears? Uh, just a, a general comment. Uh, the, the, um, the Organization Community Services League needs no introduction here in Independence, of course. Um, Council Member uh, Perkins just mentioned them uh, a minute ago, but a number of us did uh, have an opportunity to attend their um, big gala that they do annually, and uh, just want to uh, give a shout out to our community. The, they were able to raise roughly $115,000 um, that night um, for you know, serving the, the poor and under, underprivileged in our community. Uh, certainly a worthwhile endeavor and um, was a, a, a good event. And so just want to congratulate them on that uh, endeavor. That's all I have. Thank you. Councilmember McCandless. You know, I always have a million things. Um, I want to thank the Sustainability Commission for their bike tour of historic places. It was tons of fun. If they do it again, I recommend you come. It was really enjoyable. Um, I want to give a shout out to the parks, police, everybody who is involved in the Halloween parade. Always a good time. Kids had a wonderful time. The adults dressed up a whole bunch. So uh, it, it, they, they had uh, a lot of good clean fun. So appreciate the work that goes into that. Um, I was uh, fortunate to be able to go to Mid-America Regional Council, did a training on the National Incident Management System, really understanding how municipalities deal with um, natural disasters, both man-made natural disasters, uh, and how that trickles through city. How do you deal with incident command? How do you bring resources in? How do you address volunteers who are interested in helping? Uh, city Manager Walker was there, assistant to the city manager. Sam was there. Who else was there? There were some folks from fire department there. Uh, so well attended, um, which was marvelous. I was invited to participate in the Jackson County Housing and Homeless Coalition uh, and made a presentation to the Jackson County Legislature about some of the efforts that are going on in independence. Um, they were receptive to that. I hope they will also be interested in funding efforts here in independence that we can continue to address what is really a difficult problem. Um, and I know other people probably are gonna talk about Cargo Largo, but it was a delight to go to that ribbon cutting. So thank you very much. Thank you, Council Member. Council Member Hobart. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, there's just a couple things on here that were, reminded me of, it was like uh, old uh, home week a little bit. I think it was three years ago Councilmember Perkins and I uh, worked on the very small campaign we did, along with, at the time, Sergeant Peterson, if he's not sleeping in the back. He denies everything, as usual. Uh, the campaign to amend, uh, we put on the ballot the uh, amendment to the pets and police tax that we had. Um, which in part have helped us and will help us pay for the body-worn cameras that we just approved. Um, and it's kind of funny how things work out. Uh, so here we are three years later and putting that money to good use, uh, thankfully, which is really cool. Um, 
So that's a really, really, really long time coming and good step forward for our department and our city and our residents. Um, and Lois Williams also uh, helped with that committee and, th and a lot of people did. So thanks, thanks for all of that. The other, the other uh, uh, day I was certainly reminded of was, um, of course, the Cargo Largo uh, ribbon cutting, and they had they had the uh, Harry Truman impersonator and Casey Wolf and tons of people. The first person in line was a lady that flew in from California. Uh, seriously, she flew in from California to be first in line and was had to hurry up and get in and get back on her plane to go home. Um, but for those of you that don't know, I, I grew up, literally grew up in the house that's literally closest to Cargo Largo. So I've, and it was not that then, but um, the groundbreaking, Jerry, was two years ago, roughly, on a day very much like the grand opening. It was colder than it should have been and kind of a gray day. And our friend Karen uh, DeLucci was there. And it, I was just, I was thinking about her and how much she would have loved to have been there to see that open. She really, she really would have gotten a kick out of that because she, like me, waited a long, long time for that project to finally uh, come to fruition. So we're very thankful to Deepak and his family and, and all the dollars and hard work that went into that. And we'll be very thankful for all the jobs that are created uh, and all the tax revenue and the commerce and the energy that'll be uh, created uh, through through that business and and through the Nolan Road Sid and 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 all the work of the city that went into that and the staff, of course. So thank you very much for all that went into that. But it was a great morning. It was a great day, and uh, lots and lots of decades of work by his family going back to the fifties. Uh, they've been in business doing parts of that business since the late 50s, so pretty amazing. Uh, really neat deal. So that's all, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Please proceed. I forgot an item. Um, Mr. City Manager, I wonder if it's possible for us at a future study session to better understand the police pursuit policy. Um, is just an item that a lot of cities are thinking about, and uh, I, I would like to understand what our current policy is, how we review that, how we address that, um, and see if there are areas that we can um, think about that perhaps um, a little more broadly. So thank you. Thank you. Um, and I wanna give a shout out to the communication staff, Meg Lewis and your team, Christina Heinen, and the shelter, uh, they put together a fantastic video. Uh, I think it's the first time you've done this, isn't it? And so they, they put together an idea, which I think is fantastic, to promote some of the shelter animals. And so you actually put together a video of a pit bull named Flower, who'd actually been in the, in the uh, shelter since March. And you played the video, and we'll hold off to see if Flower is still at the shelter or not. Uh, but you don't have to play the whole video, but just play a portion of it to show the, gr the great amount of work that you did, but also the collaboration between the two departments. So uh, you did a great job there. And that is Flower. And she was visiting the day with the city staff. played it all so very good great job but um, I thought you did a great job there so I just want to give you a, a tremendous shout out I think there was also another uh, pit bull in that and we actually have a picture of her here so I don't know if people can see her or not but this is actually Pippa 
and she's a four-year-old pit bull terrier that came in a stray in last August, so she's been put into the shelter for about three or four months. Uh, she is food motivated. Uh, I also am food motivated, so that works. Uh, she gets along with kids and adults. She's been to multiple staff and volunteers have taken her to multiple events, and she has always done great. And so I'm just doing a promotion for Pippa to help her find a home. So I just want to give a shout out to the shelter staff and the communication staff to partner on that. I think it's wonderful. And, uh, oh, I didn't tell the rest of the story. What do you think? Do you think Flower got uh, adopted or not? She did. You're absolutely right. Uh, Pippa got, or Flower got adopted. And did you, you, did you adopt her? Or? No. Uh, did somebody adopt her that's in here? I would like to give them a big shout out if they did. But anyway, uh, keep in mind the animals at the shelter. And I just thought that was a great job to do it. And I look forward to collaborating more on making it happen in the future. So perfect. Well done. So uh, with that, I will turn over to Mr. City Manager and go ahead, top the dogs. Yeah, well, thanks. That was <laughs> nice tee up. <laughs> thanks for setting me up there. Sorry about that. <laughs> All right, I'll see your dog and raise you some trash cleanup, Mr. Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> good, good segue. Um, uh, it was mentioned earlier about the Community Services League um, fundraising event this past weekend. Um, one of the big partnerships that the city has embarked with that entity on this past year is Independence Together. Uh, through that program, residents in our community who are on a better path to uh, self-sustainability have collected uh, over 250,000 250, pounds of trash in our community. Um, our Independence Event Center, CID, so we hear about community improvement districts, probably sometimes wonder what those do. Though that entity has voted to give $50,000 of their funds uh, to Independence Together so that uh, this holiday season uh, they can focus in the 39th Street uh, corridor uh, over in the event center area uh, so that we can do trash cleanup, uh, make that area look good as it's a major regional sales tax hub for us, particularly during the holidays, but more importantly, continue this program through the winter months to continue to help our residents who are benefiting from working in this program. Very good. Yeah, great job. Excellent. Anything else, Mr. City Manager? No, nothing else tonight. All right, very good. Well, with that, we'll call this meeting adjourned. Thank you all.